Hello students, Khush Amdeed, welcome and Khush Kaldanis. Today we are going to discuss uh, a playwright and uh, particularly a modernist playwright. The dramatist we are going today is Henry Gibson, the father of English drama, modern English drama. And uh, basically, Henrik Ibsen uh, was born in 1828 in Skien, Norway. So that's why he is known as a Norwegian playwright. He was the eldest of five children after the death of uh, his older brother. Henrik Ibsen belonged to a business family, means a stable family, a rich family. His father uh, belonged to the profession of uh, uh, a merchant. He was a merchant. His father uh, died at a very early age when Ibsen was young, uh, but uh, his life was prosperous. He had led a very prosperous life and even he got married in a very uh, rich family. His uh, wife was also the daughter of a merchant. So uh, he belonged to a, a well-off family. And he belonged to a well-off setup. Let's talk about the the features of uh, Ibsen's writings, or we can say Ibsen as a dramatist. Ibsen as a dramatist was inspired by the demands of the critics that literature should address current problems of the day. Means on that time there was uh, the hue and cry of uh, realism and uh, didacticism and the uh, depiction of society in real in literature so ibsen got inspiration from this very concept that the literature should address the problems of the day and ibsen set to develop a dramatic form in which the serious matters could be dealt with using stories about uh, the everyday life and the social life of the people of the time. The very kind of plays uh, are, not, are also known as Ibsenites. This is the term critics uh, have uh, discovered for and or have uh, nominated or have decided for Ibsen in, in terms of the uh, themes of his drama in the backdrop in the backdrop of of uh, his dramas he is uh, given this title uh, his dramas are given uh, this title as ibsenite rather his themes are given this title the ibsenite themes ibsenite drama ibsen did not only invent the realistic means uh, he did not only invent the realistic drama or social drama, but he also uh, tried to uh, reform the drama of the time. He also tried to uh, maturize the, the modern drama. Uh, he perfected the form of modern drama. In doing so, he became the most famous dramatist of the 19th century. The very term Ibsenite was first used by George Bernard Shaw for admiring uh, the plays of uh, Henrik Ibsen because uh, Bernard Shaw uh, had got a great inspiration from uh, Henrik Ibsen and he uh, entitled his works as Ibsenites. And uh, when we talk about uh, the definition of the very term or the definition of the very concept Ibsenite, then we can say that Ibsenite des describes a play that exposes uh, uh, individual and social hypocrisy, means uh, the dual standards of uh, the society. And the best example of this play, uh, this kind of plays, uh, are the pillars of society, a doll's house, uh, ghosts, uh, and uh, then had a gabbler. So let's discuss uh, each of these plays one by one shortly. When we talk about uh, a doll's house, which was written in uh, and produced in 1879, the very play 
represents the point that the social conventions are conventions of society uh, they actually hinder the personal development of an individual then the very play uh, a doll's house deals with the themes of marriage and society and the conflicts uh, that are created by marriage and society are particularly ma- living a married life within the society that that has a very uh, artificial manners this sort of uh, uh, themes are generated in this play uh, a doll's house uh, and um, in this very play at the end of the play the decision of the protagonist the decision of the protagonist nora represents the individualism the the individual exercising one's own will to live a free life that's how that's how we can uh, term this drama as uh, a feminist play uh, as well and uh, the there will be a, a detailed discussion on the themes and uh, the lessons and on the even style of writing of ibsen uh, ibsen's doll's house uh, separately but i am today i am discussing ibsen as a dramatist so let's move to the next drama that is uh, uh, not much uh, in practice in academia but uh, in pakistan but it is also uh, the part of academia uh, across the world internationally uh, in the coasts Uh, Ibsen deals with the themes of morality, religion, uh, the the diseases, uh, and then an other new concept that has been dealt by uh, Ibsen in this very play is euthanasia. Morality and religions uh, are not only um, dealt in this play; they are also dealt in other plays. But uh, the very theme of euthanasia. Uh, is necessary to be explained because uh, Ibsen and uh, Bernard Shaw, unlike the society of that time, they were the supporter of the concepts of uh, concept of euthanasia. Now, euthanasia can be uh, defined as mercy killing, in in easy words. Uh, in a few of con- the countries across the world, it is legalized, but in most of the countries, it isn't legalized. Euthanasia means mercy killing means. Uh, that uh, anyone who is suffering from any kind of trouble or any kind of disease or any kind of inability or disability that cannot be uh, uh, treated and uh, that is cureless and that very person wants to uh, get rid of that pain and that uh, uh, suffering and for that uh, they, that that very person is allowed to kill himself or to be killed uh, uh, by someone else uh, this that's how um, b- this concept can be defined as mercy killing that this act is the killing of any person or uh, the suicide or even the murder of any person in order to uh, just uh, uh, give him or her freedom from uh, his her pain so this is the concept of euthanasia and this is introduced and promoted in the play goes in which oswald uh, the son of mrs uh, alving Uh, he was suffering uh, from a very terrible disease that was cureless, and he just handed over uh, the morphine uh, to his mother uh, in order to uh, kill him, in order to just uh, liberate him, in order to free him from the pain. Because in his disease, in the in the uh, in that disease, he he was unable to control himself, so he uh, could cause. uh harms for the others so this was the concept in the play uh, for this oswald decided to kill himself and uh, he uh, first of all mrs uh, alving wasn't ready to accept that but then um, she uh, ultimately just convinced uh, to the very idea of euthanasia so in this very play uh, the new thing is that that mrs alving uh, the central character 
uh, or the lady of the play, she discovers that there are forces within the individual that can be more destructive than uh, the external forces. So this very thing uh, is a contribution of um, Henry Gibson and that's why he's known as his plays are known as his pl plays are entitled as Ibsenite because they deal with uh, dynamic themes they deal with different themes they deal with the, the themes that are uh, uh, less considered but uh, uh, this very plague host uh, had to face a lot of moral and uh, uh, political criticism and um, religious criticism after it got uh, represented in 1881. The last of the Ibsenite plays uh, is An Enemy of the People. This is uh, uh, not a tragedy or this is also dealing with the social uh, themes but it is one of the finest comedies written by uh, Henrik Ibsen. After uh, Gradually, Ibsen's uh, themes and plays got maturity and novelty um, and innovation. So after 1882, Ibsen concentrated more on the problems of individual as compared to the society. Because before this, he was uh, focusing on the problems of society that the society uh, was creating for the individual on that time. And he tried to represent those problems in his play, the problems of society and individual, the conflict between society and individual. But after 1882, he started focusing on uh, the problems of individual uh, that's why his plays are uh, carrying the bent of individualism. That is the very uh, focal uh, feature, the, that's the very prominent feature of modernist literature. He wrote The Wild Duck in 1884 and this very play shows how the average man needs illusions. Illusions means the unreal and misleading thoughts or ideas or like the fairy tale ideas or the assumptions to survive in one's life and what happens to the family when it is forced to face the truth. So this very play is based on this very ideology. Then comes the turn of Hedda Gabler, uh, a very um, celebrated play of uh, uh, Henry Ibsen, and it is also uh, widely taught across the world. Uh, Hedda Gabler is a celebrated play, is uh, one of the celebrated plays of Henry Ibsen, and it was produced in 1890. And it's the story of an unhappy woman who attempts to interfere with the lives of others. Uh, and this was the problem of the lady due to the insecurities that uh, have been caused by the society in her life because of uh, her social status uh, in as a bachelor woman and then her social status as a married woman and then uh, she wants to be in center she wants to be in power she wants to influence other others this this uh, can be taken as a psychological condition uh, that's how that's why uh, this very play is based on the uh, individual uh, individuals uh, the problem of an individual uh, or the themes of an individual's uh, uh, psychological conditions and social problems and psychological problems uh, there is much of Ibsen's uh, uh, Ibsen we can find in Hedda Gabler. Uh, many of Ibsen's plays uh, represent confessions of his sins. And uh, the Master Builder uh, that was produced in 1892 is one of the most beautiful dramas because the story, uh, it's the story of an artist uh, consumed by guilt over the uh, wife and children he has murdered. Uh, to further his ambitions and uh, normally Ibsen uh, represents this sort of characters as uh, good people because in uh, Ghost he represented the character uh, such kind of character who was a good um, woodworker but he was a uh, um, drunker but a good person so uh, Ibsen uh, is not only uh, has not only maturized, uh, sorry, has not only uh, improved the drama, rather we can, we can use a very particular term that he nourished the modern trauma with very dynamic themes, with very different themes that 
that uh, uh, will uh, that would be uh, the become the base of the postmodernist uh, aspects and postmodernist literature uh, however ibsenian uh, themes and ibsenian uh, form of the drama was later on maturized by uh, bernard shaw and then tom stoppard and many other playwrights of the modernist and postmodernist time period we will have uh, uh, a separate discussion on the other playwrights and uh, i'll try my best to uh have separate sessions for each of the celebrated academically celebrated drama of uh, uh henry kipson thank you so much for today see you in the next video inshallah allah hafiz